So what do you guys say? You want to get started? Yeah. All right. Now, for uh, those of you who have had your fill of technology today, I've got the incredibly low-tech handouts back there on the corner, and I got some up here. You want to take notes, something to put it on. If you're tired of typing everything with your thumbs or just type it in, feel free. It's your state tax dollars at work, so. Well, good afternoon. Has everyone uh, had a good time at Sidelight today? All right. Have you learned something? All right. Have you had fun? All right. Well, let's see if you can learn even more and have even more fun. And welcome to Gaming and Technical Learning, Bridging the Gap. Uh, my name is George Waters, and I am a system and business application trainer for the Kansas Department of Revenue. Yeah, that sounds exciting, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, actually, it can be. Technical training uh, can be a lot of fun for your students and maybe more importantly for you if you remember a few things and just use a little bit of imagination. And that's why you're here today. Hopefully, when the session's over, you'll have some ideas that you can take back for your technical learning that will make it more exciting for your learners and for you as the developer and the instructor of these courses. Now, what could be more fun than required training? I, yeah, really? Now, I do have to admit, number one wasn't a problem at all. There was plenty of parking. We need to thank uh, Johnson County Community College for that. that. That one's expressing my anxiety, I think, <laughs> running in late, so. But you know, required training is, is typically not one of those things that uh, learners just flock to. You know, they don't get excited about that required training. And unfortunately for me, one of the first courses I was assigned to teach was the required security awareness course for new hires. You know, that lock your PC, don't give out your password to anybody, beware of social engineering and tailgaters and all that sort of thing. And you know, that's not a topic that usually generates a lot of enthusiasm among learners anyway. And to make it worse, this was the day after they spent an entire day with HR, droning over all of the policies and procedures of the Department of Revenue and having them sign papers ad nauseum. It, it was just, it was absolutely horrible. And I had been through that form of institutional hazing a few years before that and was like, no way am I going to do this. So I, I'm assigned this course and the, the first course that I am assigned is a three and a half hour long PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> You know, this, this is the real bore you to tears uh, sort of class, and it, 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 was, it was horrible. Um, so I had my assignment. I have to teach required security awareness. So I'm thinking, all right, okay, what do I want? I have no clue. But I know what I don't want. I don't want a three and a half hour bore you to tears sort of class. I mean, who really? Anybody in here like taking courses like that? Anybody like developing classes like that? Sure, it's easy. Just slap a bunch of text on a slide and there you go. But really, it's no fun. No, no one really likes that. So the first question I had to ask myself is, OK, what do I want as a learner? Now, why start with that question? Well, how many of you have taken a course um, presented by a knowledgeable, you know, perhaps maybe even too knowledgeable of a individual like a, a subject matter expert? Anybody? Yeah, okay. So you feel my pain. You know, they know a lot. Uh, they're a great resource, but unfortunately they know so much and they want to share it all with you. Absolutely everything, including the first discussion held in 1959 when this course was planned. 
They want to tell you all about it. And as you guys know, that is just way too much information for the learners to struggle through. What they need is the relevant information. We need to find that relevant information that's going to be applicable to their work or to the course. You know, what they need to learn and what they need to know. So, what do I need to know? As I said, the first thing was relevancy. Now, the next thing is I'm an extrovert. Can you tell? Anybody? I mean, this shirt alone pretty much tells you that. So, I'm an extrovert, and uh, I want to work in a relaxed environment that encourages interactivity and or collaborative learning. You know, now not everyone's as cool as I am, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll work with it. Some people like the structure, they like the predictability of things. So yeah, I figured I'll keep this in mind, but I'm gonna sneak a few things in on them there and uh, you know, force them to have fun while they learn a few things. Like I said, I like to have fun. I mean, I mean, who doesn't like to have fun, really? Okay, maybe my father, and that's debatable, but you know, everyone really likes to have fun. So I thought about this stuff and I thought, okay, what do I got? Got my list. The information needs to be relevant, needs to be interactive or collaborative, and I want it to be relaxed and fun. So I established what I want as a learner, I've got it made. So now, what do I want as a developer? Well, I want to develop a course that's not painfully mind-numbing. I mean, why must learning be dreary and joyless? Why do we insist on clinging to this, this puritanical factory model of learning? You know, is it because we're lazy? Is it because, well, yeah, are you shaking his head? Or, yeah, it's, uh, I'm lazy. You know, it, it, Really, I don't think that's what it is at all. I think we just need to, to remember learning can be fun, and let's try to bring the joy back into learning. You know, we can design learning around the, the learner's interest and still have, have fun while being professional while we do this. And the trick here is to immerse your learners in a complex and interactive experiences that are both rich and real and, and have fun doing it. Um, you know, and that, I'm not just talking about coming up with a, a color palette. About every, every single course out there will have a color palette that you could select from and, and do your online presentation with those colors. I'm actually talking about going way beyond that. And that's, that's what we are going to talk about here. So what are, what are some ways that uh, some of you might take a three and a half hour long PowerPoint presentation and make it relevant? Anything? I can take it. Okay, nothing? <laughs> really, come on. Okay. Exactly. That's one way. Videos is a real good, good resource. And that was one thing, and, and I'll show you the guys just a few slides, make you feel my pain on some of this. I mean, it was nothing. It, it was slides. And that was one of the first thing, simple things that I did was start, let's start putting some video into this. Well, let's start adding a few other things. But here's actually what I did. It, this is a good start, but here is actually what I did. I took you know, this room. <laughs> And this learner, and I turned it into this. I took this three and a half hour long PowerPoint presentation and turned it into a three and a half hour long basketball game. Yes, basketball. And I don't even like basketball. The class, as I said, it's still about three and a half hours long, but three hours of this entire class is collaboration with the other learners in the class. It's interactive. I added that comical video. We've got like this 20 minute little video from uh, Virginia Department of Revenue. If any of you do anything with, 
with system security. This video is awesome. It's called The Does of Security. And it has an actor playing, uh, geez, let's see, uh, Columbo, Mr. Rogers, Richard Nixon, uh, Jack Nicholson, uh, a whole variety of characters. And it's really funny. I, the state, we had these videos that they gave me, said, here, use these videos, and they were the cheesiest. I, they were horrible. These people were overacting. They were bad. But this one, it's a lot of fun. He keeps it on, on target, and uh, it, you really should check it out. You can go out to YouTube. It's called The Does of Security. So we showed, the, I'm sorry? Duh, D-U-H-S, The Does of Security. So you should really check it out. It, it's great. But you know, not only have I obviously spiced up the room and added the video and everything, I actually play Sweet Georgia Brown. It's so funny because most of the younger people in there have no clue what it is. <laughs> um, but being the slight saddest that I am, I play it over and over. So they leave class and they've got it stuck in their head. So. If they know nothing else, is the tune to Sweet Georgia Brown. Wear a referee shirt, complete with the whistle. I only had to use it once when my basketball game almost turned into a hockey game during the jump ball. <laughs> Watch out for that. Um, but you know, really the best, the best part about it is my feedback has been about 99.9% .9 positive. You know, there's always that 0.1% that didn't like something about what you did. But the test scores, have increased overall, and based on the surveys, retention of the information has improved. And perhaps most importantly, I had a lot of fun doing it. I mean, come on, you're all like, oh yeah, really, really? Yeah, come on, <laughs> this is for you guys, you know, we, we need to have fun doing this stuff, so. Now, some of the diehard traditionalists, and yeah, there we go, sorry. Some of the diehard traditionalists, which you could read is, you know, those poor souls that are still suffering from the debilitating belief and practices that continue, and they blindly follow them in spite of decades of research that shows it's actually detrimental to learning. They're, they're pretty skeptical when they walk into this class. But so far, by the end of it, most of them have come up to me and said, you know, that was fun and I actually did learn something. And that is awesome. That is exactly what I wanted to hear. Now, my grandfather always used to say that there's, you know, two types of things. There's two things you can do in life. You can have fun or you can learn something. Honestly, I think there's three. You can have fun and learn something. And that's what this course was all about. And you can see what I've done here. We've got little banners up on the wall since it's a security awareness. I took our uh, security information officer's cheesy little security and broke it down to SEC capital U-R hyphen I-T. So it's security, you are it. Put those on the walls. We've added the color posters, the total basketball themes. Now a couple more shots of the rooms here. Nothing, come on, jeez. Wow. wow, there we go, thank you. Okay, also, you see on, on the, the, there we go, on the, uh, the tables there, what I've done is I've taken sheets, color-coded them for each of the four aspects that we're going to be talking about, break it up, they have notebooks, they get together as a team, they come up with the team name, usually something silly. Uh, last time I did it, it was the Stallones versus the Artichokes. I have no clue where they come up with this stuff, but they come up with their team name, and as a team, they research the questions. I've got a series of questions they go through, I give them the material, send them loose, figure out what the answers are. Then, once both teams have it done, call them up to the front and say, all right, let's play some basketball. Do a jump ball, which <laughs> may or may not be recommended, depending on your, your uh, class. And then we start playing some basketball. They come up and they're gonna decide if they're gonna shoot for one or three points, six foot or 10 feet away. What you think? Six foot, maybe. I tell you, that Nerf hoop is one of the hardest things to hit. It's just, and then I ask them the question, and it's the exact same questions they've already researched. Ask them the question, they get it right, they get two points, yay, and then they shoot. 
And really what this is doing, we're trying to put more focus on the content here. Do they know the information? Did they get the question right? And then, you know, we'll throw in the fun, they, they get a shoot and go for the basket. Here's another example of the room here. A lot more color, all right. Hey, one, one person, all right, got it. And, and we remember our, our learner asleep. Now here's what they're looking like. <laughs> And believe it or not, they actually like, well, at least they tell me, they actually like posing. We do the team pictures with their team names on them. Um, post them in the next class. It's got their pictures up there. And it, it, it's really been a lot of fun to do. And we're, you know, we're still focusing on the content of all this. But now, as I said earlier, we, we do have to keep our, our audience in mind. Um, so when you're teaching, you've got to remember, who are you teaching? Are you teaching this guy? Or are you teaching this guy? <laughs> now, some people actually learn better by doing, some by talking and hearing, you know, others by observing and, and learn better by problem solving. So we must present materials that stimulate as many senses as possible. And as developers, we don't typically get to create a course for one specific type of learner. So we do need to incorporate as many aspects into the course that will appeal to the most amount of learners and challenge them. Because you know, if, if you're not challenging them, they're just going through the motions. They're, they're just regurgitating the data. And you know, we all know that that's really not learning. So what do you have to do? Well, actually, let me ask you this. What's one difference between adult learning and childhood learning? Anything? Adults do bring experience, that's true. And that is definitely something that you, you, you can't just dismiss their experience throughout life in the course. One thing that I've personally noticed is that typically kids have a lot more fun learning than adults do. Um, kids, they, they get to play games, they take an active role in their learning, but for some reason, so many people think that adults like to sit there and be lectured to. Now, I know as a kid, I didn't, and I don't like it now. So, what we're really talking about here is educational entertainment or edutainment. Um, as you know, it's been around for millennia, and it really caught on in the United States about the 1970s. And many college professors use edutainment very successfully. I, th I think we've seen some, some outstanding examples of it here today. I know I, I can't wait to get back on Monday. There, there's a few courses that I've learned about here that I plan on incorporating into some of these courses. Now, one of the criticisms with edutainment is that it often glosses over the educational content. And as trainers, we need to be aware of that pitfall, but honestly, clearly defined objectives and, and well-established criteria really minimize that risk. So we just need to keep in mind that while the games are a lot of fun, the game is simply a framework to build around. It's sort of like those educational dioramas we all did back in school, you know, with the little toy dinosaurs and the the cotton ball smoke billowing out of the paper mache volcano. You know, it looked really cool, but it was the content that actually got us the grade. So we don't want to play a game just to play a game. The purpose needs to be to help the learner process and retain the new information. Now, as developers, we also have to be artistic. Now, for those of you actually thinking that you can't even draw a stick figure, don't panic. A lot of people can't draw but are very artistic. Do any of you in your scrapbook or take photographs? Good photographer. Got a couple back there. Okay. I, I'm sure Marie does something yeah. up here. So, um, so you know, do, do any of you just like to doodle? Yeah. You know, that, that's actually, you are being artistic in your own way. And all we need to do is channel that creative spirit into our courses. Now, how do we do that? 
The first thing is don't get stressed out about it. I am the prime example of getting stressed out about it. It'll kill your creativity. Because you start going, well, I need to, and what about, and maybe I, yeah, don't just, just back up, just relax. Breathe. Okay? They say that the best authors are those that write from personal experience, and I agree. You know, if you look at your own life experiences, things like, you know, board games that you played as a kid or, or video games, you can actually get a lot of good ideas for doing some of this learning. How many of you play Clue? Yeah, exactly. Everybody knows Clue. What about life? You know, I want to do Battleship. I was in the Navy, so it, it just, you know, it seems appropriate that I do some sort of game based around Battleship that... I'm, I'm thinking HR probably won't go for it, but you know, there we go. Uh, you know, what about favorite video games? Anybody got a favorite video game they like to play? Galaga? Okay. Anything else? How about, how about a favorite book? Come on. You guys, Dune? <laughs> Okay, well, okay, ladies, what about a favorite movie? Star Star well, okay. See, I was expecting somebody, Twilight. <laughs> so, Star... Okay, <laughs> but Star Wars. So just think about these things you've got. You played Clue, you played Life, you like Star Wars, you like the book Dune. Man, these are all wonderful ideas that you can actually start pulling from to, to develop your courses here. Now... You do have to keep, like I said earlier, you got to keep your audience in mind because not everybody likes Harry Potter, or Twilight, and you know, just just some things are not appropriate. But one thing is, sports is always very popular. Even people who don't play a particular sport, they generally have an idea of how the sports played. So that that's also a good thing to remember. Now. Once you get your ID down, you know, you're not stressed, you're relaxed, you got the idea, you're going to build this game around, you know, Clue. The next thing you need to do is be confident. Do I make myself clear? Be confident. You are the instructor. You are the trainer. Go for it. What's the worst thing that can happen? Well, don't answer that, but, <laughs> you know, hold that, hold that thought. Now, I do want to go over a couple uh, special considerations. Uh, one is don't be afraid to use color. Okay, the, the Department of Revenue is absolutely horrible. Everything we have is dark blue, white blue, and light blue, and yellow. All of it. Cannot stand it. Don't be afraid to use the color. You, you, if you want to use a red icon and a green icon, go for it. Just don't rely on the color. Add a little bit of text to it. You know, tell them what the red one is, tell them what the green one is, so that your colorblind learner is not sitting there going, okay, which brown one do I choose? Now, another thing is audio. Audio can really add a lot to your presentation. But if someone's deaf or doesn't have a sound card or speakers or, or headphones, they're not going to be able to hear it and they're out of luck. And incidentally, so are you if you're relying on the audio to get your point across. So I would use it for the ambiance. How many of you like Italian food? Italian, every time you go into an Italian restaurant, they're playing Sinatra. You know, there's a reason they're playing this. They're trying to add to the whole ambiance of this. And that actually can work very well with your courses. And as always, you know, we need to keep the, the special needs in the back of our mind and be sure you have alternatives so that all the learners can achieve the goals of the course. Now, has anyone got any great ideas yet? Anything you're just dying to go back and do? Nothing? <laughs> Nothing at all? Did you guys like get a, a sugar rush? A Star Wars theme, okay. So what, do you, what, what class are you teaching? And, ooh. Okay. Will you think about it and let us know how this is going to work, okay? Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, the, the exact same creative approaches can work for...
purple on white. Maybe not the bad, you know, not bad. Okay, we've added a little bit of color. And incidentally, this was the most exciting slide out of all 300 and some of them, so I had to put this one up there. And, you know, we've got text, yay. And, you know, even more text and yeah, policies in Oh, come on, you're killing me here. So here, okay, this is the last one. Now, these next set of slides are slides that I actually developed using Lectora. Does anyone use Lectora? All right, a lot of people use it. Um, it's actually, it's created by the Trivantis Corporation. It's a e-learning development tool made by Trivantis. John Woods, he's actually sitting in the back here. He told me not to point him out, so I've got to do it. Uh, John's actually here, if, if you're interested in Lectora. Personally, I find it incredibly easy to use, and for a guy like me, I need to keep it simple. But it's really great. Uh, their, their help desk guys have helped me out several times, so it's a good product, but you don't need any specific product to, it, to do any of this stuff. So here, here's some examples of some stuff that you know I started doing. We, we tried to make it a little bit more interactive over here. You know, let the learner start choosing where they go. Also added a little bit of, uh, made sure we use buttons with the text on it. We do have a, a small population at the Department of Revenue that's still not real comfortable with technology. And if it's just an arrow, they, they, they start to get a little bit lost. Also, you know, we're starting to use some relevant photographs here. You know, more photographs, not being afraid to use white space. Like I said, this is my first course here, so, you know, be kind to me. Here we go. Now, I do have to tell you, when I did this course, we had a, yeah, and this, this is being live streaming, so I'm probably gonna get busted on this. We, we had a lady that insisted on reviewing all of our courses and being sure that it met you know, her criteria. And you'll notice it's dark blue and light blue here. So I snuck this in here, and to the best of my knowledge, she never figured this out. <laughs> this was for my own amusement, but I got it in there. It's published. It's <laughs> I pulled one over on her. I actually had a few learners come back and say, um, do you know if, I, I think it was M, if you hit the M key, this monkey sits like, yeah. I know, isn't that great? They hit him again, he goes away. So, you know, once again, most learners are probably never going to, to run across, but hey, add it, be fun. You know, the, the, the couple that found it, they had a lot of fun, you know, I had a lot of fun because it was great. Your content looks very good, we'll go ahead and publish it. I'm like, yes, you didn't see the monkey. So, now I did hear, uh, when I was making this, uh, a study that you're probably going, yeah, dude, that's like 20 years old, that said things in red, people retain that information a little bit better. So I started splashing in a little bit of red text here. You know, it's still pretty basic stuff. Also, starting to break it up a little bit, asking them questions as they go throughout the course, but yeah, nothing here. Now, I do want to point out one thing. The security awareness basketball game, <laughs> the three and a half hour long bore fest, this one, the next couple I'm gonna show you, it's all the exact same content. In fact, most of it I just cut and pasted. But you, you notice we went this purple, we get this, we're getting a real, we're getting a different feel going here. We're setting the mood for this. This was my 2010. Drastic, the lady's gone. She was assigned to a special project, so I, I ran wild with it, okay? My inspiration on this one, can anybody have any ideas? what this might be. You saw the detectives up there, the guns. I'm sorry, what? Bogart. Dick Tracy, actually. Bogart's a, Bogart's a good guess. I saved like 50 pictures of Bogart thinking I'd work him in there somewhere. Dick Tracy, very good, thank you. I never really liked the Dick Tracy comic book, but I was thinking, okay, how can I do a game with security? You know, security, what are you thinking of? Cops and robbers, good guys, bad guys, detectives, clue. Dick Tracy. So when I started doing my research, I started finding the color combination. Yes, okay, it's still got a lot of blue and yellow in it, but Dick Tracy had a lot of blue and yellow in it. Playing around, making, making the, uh, the little icons up here, making them a little bit more fun, adding that color, red, blue text. Still want to be sure that people can read it. 
but uh, you know, starting to have a little bit more fun with this. Now here, once again, because I've got that just demented <laughs> sense of humor, I had to add something for my own amusement in there. And then you're welcome to the precinct by the chief. The chief pretty much tells you he's assigning you some work. The commissioner wants it done, and you better do a good job on it, rookie. He tells you to click your desk icon. So you go up here and you click the desk icon. This is your desk. Okay. Now, how it actually would look is all four of these case files over on the left side would say case one, two, three, and four. And as I tell the learner, you can go into any case. You don't have to start at the top. You can go into any one. We're giving them some choices. Now, it's really kind of funny because this course is structured to where they're going to have to do everything I want them to do. They're going to have to do it, but it kind of gives them the illusion that they're fully in control of this. So they could pick whatever one they wanted. If they went into one and got out for whatever reason, it would actually pop up. And can you guys read that back there? Kind of, yeah, it's kind of difficult up here, but it's under investigation. You know, we're trying to go with the terminology. We're trying to set the theme for this whole thing. You know, you're not the learner at the Department of Revenue. You're the detective. This is your case. You know, this case is under investigation. Once they get it complete, the folder would pop up and say closed. We're going to case one here. I'll show you a little bit. First screen, just tell them a little bit. Got a non-authorized person, gained access into a secure area and got on the computer. How did it happen? We're setting the background. We're starting to introduce some real life things. We're keeping the theme. We're trying to immerse them into this whole little world we've set up for them. You know, starting to use, uh, starting to use more of the tough talk, at least as tough as HR would let me go with. They were not happy about the guns that you saw at the beginning with the two detectives. Fortunately, HR usually doesn't review the system and business stuff at all. So it was only after the fact and they took it and they're like, are you sure the guns were appropriate? And it's like, well, done. duly noted. Yeah, wait till you see what I'm working on for next year. You're going to love this. So you tell the detective, you need to go in and you need to talk to these three people. So now, you know, it's, this is a lot more interactive. You're not just reading there and clicking next page, next page, next page. You got to go out and find out what's going on here. And incidentally, all, all the artwork, it's, I found all of it online. To the best of my knowledge, it's all free. Um, I, I, I try, you know, we'll, we'll see. But you go in and you, you'll talk to these people. And you got a couple questions you're going to ask them. You know, I don't want to bore you with the details of this, but ask them a question that pops up and an answer. And, and I tried to write it instead of just being the boring old text, trying to write it like, like these people would speak. And what this is also starting to do, it's starting to introduce some of the policy, some of the procedures, some of the content in here. You know, Lisa here is telling you she has not lost her security badge or loaned it to anyone, because we all know you're not to loan your security badge to anyone. And she always looks behind her to be sure no one's tailgating. So great. I added this little blurb down here for, for our learners that are terrified of X's. You know, you click an X, you just close the course. I'll ask her the next question. Pretty much exact same thing. Question the next employee. Add the little red mark here, little check mark. So people know what's going on. Once again, this whole thing is just about theme, atmosphere, trying to get them into it. We'll go through. I had a lot of fun coming up with the names like Vinnie Vane. Exact same thing. You'd go through, you would ask him. They're the exact two same questions. You finish with him, you get your check mark, go to your last person, check here. Now it pops up, gives you a little bit more information, information services. So we're going to talk to Marcy. Anybody recognize Marcy? Yeah, I, yeah, I got to tell you guys this. You, you'll absolutely love this. And this is why I had to use that. My son, he just turned five. And you can only watch so much Curious George and so much Thomas the Tank Engine. You start going out of your mind. And when I was a kid, I loved Scooby-Doo. So I introduced him to Scooby-Doo. And he became an instant fanatic with Scooby-Doo. And he, he was so into it. So I'm like, you know, Velma is going to be the perfect one to work here. So I put it in there, and I'm all happy. And we're watching Scooby-Doo. and. Sitting on the couch, and my wife comes in and says, hey, guys, it's bedtime. And my five-year-old son, without my prompting, believe it or not, looks up and goes, oh, like, no way, man. <laughs> Needless to say, we had to start watching something else for a while. But uh, what Marcy does here is Marcy starts 
even though it's in the content of the story, you know, she's having a conversation with you as the detective, she starts giving you all of that policy, all of that procedure, all that boring stuff that's usually in bullet points that you have to go through page after page to read. Now, because I'm, I'm working in a little speech bubble here, Marcy's got a lot to say. Also trying to add little fun things like this guy in here. First time there's a link on any of them, I'd put him in there just to point out that you got a link you can click to for additional information. So animation's also a great resource. We'll go through Marcy here, all this wonderful stuff. I even one of them, I was even teasing the IT guys talking about how great they are, and I put, and one is so cute, blush after it. Apparently I started a fight in the IT thing because they were fighting over which one of them was the cutest. But, you know, at least they got their attention, right? So we're done. We get a little bit more text down here. It tells them to file the report. Now, here's the sneaky thing that I did. What we've done before this is we always have the summary exercise at the end of the course. You go through all the course, you take the test. I broke it up. Did it in sections. We're going to have the test in the sections. Now, the thing about it, a lot of people say, you know, I liked it a lot better. There wasn't the anxiety of going to the end. And since you're filing your incident report, it kept it part of the theme. The other, the, the one thing that our IT security guys loved is I was actually able to sneak five more questions in on them. And to date, no one has figured out that the test is actually longer than if they would have waited to the end. But now, of course, we've got, and pardon the ding here. <coughs> Got the immediate feedback, as you all know. You know, it's important to give your learner that immediate feedback, and be it right or wrong, it tells them what the correct answer is. Correct, you are right because, or that is incorrect. Here's the correct answer. Was that good? Yeah. Anyone in there ever use a typewriter like that one? Yeah. Okay, so they go through, they file their report. Did they do it right? Is it a good report? Will the chief be happy? Yes, looks good. Keep up the good work, detective. Chief's happy. Click here to go back to your desk. Now, if they wouldn't have passed the exercise, because, you know, I'm not about, ha, 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 we're going to fail you. We want them to know the information. You know, as, as instructors, as educators, you, you want them to know. So, well, you know, we'll tell them, all right, you missed that one. But if they wouldn't have passed the test, they would have got this one. You call that a report? This isn't right. Try again, rookie. HR didn't like that either. They thought it was it might be intimidating for people. But... And then they click the folder. They'll try it again. They go back in here. Once you get it done, all your cases are closed. You're done. You got your done button here at the bottom. Wonderful. You do this. Woohoo! You got 100% and passed. Now, we're using an LMS. And for the life of me, I. I it's like you get a certain age, certain educational level. I'm not sure what it is. And people quit learn, they quit reading. You just think they don't have to read, and they just, oh, okay, I'm done. And they'd click up here, and it wouldn't send it to the LMS. So I wanted to use this little guy down here going, hey, click this button, or your score's not going to go through. So just one of those little fun things you can, you can kind of add. Now here's an example of what I'm working on for 2011. If HR freaked out about the guns, man, they're going to... Oops, sorry. They're going to they're gonna love the bomb there. Um, I'm still developing this. I'm having a little bit of problems, but uh, you know, you're seeing the ambient. You notice we've got a totally different feel now. We were yellow, bright, Dick Tracy. Now, you know, we're getting dark, black, and red. We're going spy versus spy. Okay, that's copyrighted, I know, but damn it, it's just it's such a good graphic. Um, and right now, like I said, this, this class is still in development here. Um, and in this one, instead of just having him take one role and going through the course, I'm going to let him pick. You want to be the white hat? You want to be the black hat? You want to be the good guy protecting all that personal information that everyone has when they file their Kansas taxes? Or you want to be the bad guy, try to get that information, sell it to the rough, Russian mafia, and retire to Aruba? Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 we did. Um, yeah, you know, and that, that was something I actually did think about. And what, what I'm really hoping is that people be adult enough to say the white hat, because 
for those of you that are in the security field, white hats are a lot of times hackers that have gone over to the good side. There, there, there's going to be your Jedi for you right there. They're going to be the good guys that are trying to protect the information. And the black hat hackers are the ones you know, trying to use it for ill game. But that, that is a very good point. That is something that you need to consider. And I'm still, like I said, this, this one's still in development. Um, you also notice I'm getting rid of navigation buttons as much as I can. Go through here, click this. So what the main screen is going to look like. Once again, same content. Change the feel a little bit. And this, I made up a, uh, a little article from the Capital Journal that's going to set the stage for you. You know, what, what, what's this all about? And try to get them into it. You know, you're playing the good guy. Okay, you got the background. You see why you've been called in on this case. You're the bad guy. Okay, here's something I can possibly exploit. Now this... I got panicky the other day and started deleting stuff I shouldn't have. So, uh, what I'm doing here, do this is a long shot. Did, do any of you ever have the game called Sleuth? Now, heard of it maybe? Sleuth. My my parents they got a computer. Uh, I was still in the Navy, and it was it was a lot like Clue, but it was a computer-based game where you would go around from room to room, try to gather clues, and figure out what was going on. And I actually had this idea when I was doing that 2010 one, the Dick Tracy one, but didn't figure out how to make it work. Well, I'm going to do it in this where there'll be hot spots on all these things, and the learners, instead of just going and reading, they're going to go in and they're going to have to like start moving the mouse around and getting interactive and starting to find out, you know, wait a minute, what's this file doing? Oh my God, that's a confidential file. What's that doing up there? That should be secured, sort of thing. And we've set this up, uh, working on three different offices, this, my, my absolute favorite part, once again, the most important thing in all this, other than making sure that the learner gets the information that they need, is you know, that we have fun. And I've got this little brown plant down here, and when you click on it, it was going to say, it's a fern. It's dead, Jim. I don't know how many people's going to catch it, but you know, I, I figured there's enough of us geeks out there that you know, we'd like that. So once again, we, we just have a, a another, another little office here. So, now, I got to admit, all of those things, it's a lot harder. Actually, you know, I don't want to say it's a lot harder. It's a lot more time consuming to take it and say, okay, let's do a Dick Tracy theme. Let's do a spy versus spy. Let's do Star Wars. Let's, okay, fine. Let's do Twilight or, or Harry Potter. You know, whatever you want to do, it is going to take quite a bit more time to do this in development, but it's going to be considerably more fun. And if you're creative and you have fun, I will guarantee you that your students, your learners are going to have a lot more fun. And even if you don't have them play a game, if you just go in and, and try to, to spice it up, use those colors, use the, the video, the audio, the little animation, put some theme into it, they're going to appreciate it. Uh, very much and you will be noticed. So does anyone have any questions whatsoever? Anything at all? Anybody got any ideas? Yes, sir. How many people do you run through your program? <sighs> Current, well, right now the state's in, uh, you, know, you may have heard the state of Kansas is at least claiming we have no money, so we're on a hiring freeze. The basketball game, I'm usually running about 20 people through that class and we do about four of those a year, and the, the the online content, like the Dick Tracy one there, that is a required class for all revenue employees. So we got about a thousand people running through those. So they they've got from January through the end of November to do it. But uh, so yes, sir. That I actually all I did there was I went into PowerPoint. And um, I'm trying to remember, what, it, what is that under? There's some, I'm sorry? Yeah, there's something, if you go down in the, the lower left-hand corner, that has got all the shapes, and then there's, I think, I can't remember what it's called. I tell you, I'm horrible with names, I really am. But all I did was I went out there and I just started making offices, trying to make them look sort of like offices around the building. So... 
you know, and hopefully, hopefully they'll like it. It's going to make it a lot more interactive. They're going to have to run around and, and try to do that. So, yes, ma'am. So it's the Rapid E Learning Blog at. Who'd you say it was? Articulate. Articulate. Okay. Actually, I heard about this this morning. I was like, oh man, I'm spending all this time making them. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> okay. Anybody have any questions? Anything? Any ideas? Nothing? Okay. Well, I hope uh, everyone had learned a little bit, had some fun. So you're going to do great. Just relax. Go out there. Just try to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah. What?